have never seen Wonga Wundu, but I have seen Desmond Tutu because I went to South Africa. I have never seen Martin Luther King Jr., but I have seen Desmond Tutu because I went to Soweto. And I have never seen Mahatma Gandhi, but I have seen Desmond Tutu because I went to Vilakazi Street. Not only that, I also saw Nelson Mandela on the same street. My trip to Vilakazi Street was one of my most memorable experiences while I was in South Africa to give a PhD commencement speech at a graduation in the Da Vinci Institute. Because it served as home to two Nobel laureates, Nelson Mandela, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993, and Desmond Tutu, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984. And what's more, it was the only street in the entire world. If Nelson Mandela was the heart of the anti-apartheid crusade, then Desmond Tutu was its soul. Desmond Tutu proved that with perseverance, even those who are discriminated against can rise up. Even those that when all odds are stacked against them can rise up the ranks and change the world. Desmond Tutu was the leader of the anti-apartheid crusade in its darkest moments. Desmond Tutu gave South Africa dreams to be free. And Nelson Mandela gave life to those dreams. In 1979, he became the Dean of St. Mary's Church. This made headlines because considering the extreme racism and the fact that all odds were stacked up against the black people, you would not expect a black man to get such a high position. And so, he started getting into activism, seeing the poor, suffering, mothers and fathers. And so, in 1979, during a press meeting with the Danish, he called for an international economic boycott of South Africa due to the system of apartheid. The Reagan administration didn't care to do much about the apartheid movement. And so, Desmond Tutu was seeking help, and so the first direct nation they thought of was the U.S. But the U.S., for now, did not care about apartheid. And so, and so, Tutu went and met up with the president himself, President Ronald Reagan, and he asked him to change his ways. He was truly a man of selflessness. He when garnering a position or gaining a position, he did not think of what he would gain. He thought of what the poor, suffering mothers and fathers, living large and vagrants, trying to eat out an existence. As he said himself, those poor orphans who are left behind to suffer a life horribly lived. He thought about what those people would gain. He wanted to save those who were being kicked out of homes and disregarded on the streets because of such closed mindsets of apartheid and racism. In 1985, chaos broke out. The African National Congress and the all-white government, led by President Bota, had been, uh, had been classic for years now. But, uh, but then, suddenly, the fight erupted. And so, multiple factions were caught up in this fight. Desmond Tutu tried to act as a mediator between the two, a negotiator, a middleman. And when the chaos was finally over from 1985 to 1986, there was an election for the Bishop of Johannesburg. And guess who won? One of two major candidates was Desmond Tutu. 
However, the all-white voter base consistently voted against him. However, when a Bishop Synod arrived, they decided to hand the role over to Desmond Tutu. This was a major victory for the uh, South African black community. This showed that with enough perseverance, even if you were black in this system of racism, you could rise up. During this class, there was a ban on the African National Congress, several liberties were suspended, and the secure powers of security forces like police were increased. But thankfully, after President Bota, there was a new president, President Frederick Willem de Klerk, who was a reformist white leader. He ended apartheid. This policy made many African Americans delighted. He freed Nelson Mandela from Robben Island. And he changed how uh, South Africa lived. And in 1994, a new election was held. And Nelson Mandela won overwhelmingly. And so, Nelson Mandela, the first black president of South Africa, was elected in 1994. And from there on, apartheid ended. And South Africa became the rainbow nation we know it as today. However, post apartheid, Desmond Tutu remained in the spotlight. Around 1996, he started campaigning for rights of homosexuals, acknowledging uh, gay discrimination as something akin to the discriminations of blacks and women. In 1996, he retired from being the bishop of the Anglican Church, or the bishop of Johannesburg and in 2010 he retired from public life and finally walked out of the spotlight and so just a few years before in 1995 he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer and at a hospital in Cape Town he peacefully passed away at the ripe age of 90 with the life well lived and the legacy that will never fade away, Desmond Tutu was possibly one of the greatest African leaders. And so, the African community will never forget him. The white reformist leader, President de Klerk, also had died just a month earlier. And so, I will now pay tribute to the two. Not only with the moment of silence, but also with the South African National Anthem. Kosi si kelele Afrika, malu fakani su fundo wayo, izwa imitanda zo yetu kosi si kelele dina. Lusa for while. Thank you. Kosi si geleri Africa, manu paga.